Thank you for joining us this afternoon in the next of ATA Engineering's educational webinar series, System Simulation for Deployable Space Systems. I am your host, Scott Tebow from ATA Engineering, and our speaker today will be Scott Kidney from ATA Engineering's uh, Eastern Regional Office in Herndon, Virginia. Before we get into the technical details, I would like to describe a little bit about our sponsor, ATA Engineering. So who is ATA Engineering? ATA is an employee-owned small business with a full-time staff of over 190, uh, with gusts well over 200 with our very uh, active co-op and intern program. And more than 160 of our total staff are degreed engineers with 38 PhDs, 95 master's degrees, and 28 bachelor's degrees. Among these are 11 professional uh, registered professional engineers, and we have an average experience level of 15 years with gusts up to 40. Uh, we have subject matter experts here at ATA that have been recognized by a number of uh, prestigious professional societies worldwide. ATA provides high value engineering services to help our customers solve the toughest product design challenges. The principal areas where we work are in space and aerospace, defense, robotics and controls, industrial and mining equipment, themed entertainment and consumer products. We provide these services worldwide from our offices across the United States. Our headquarters office is in San Diego, California, but we have branch offices in Los Angeles, the Bay Area, Albuquerque, Denver, Huntsville, Alabama, where I am myself located, and Herndon, Virginia, outside Washington, DC. ATA is known for our professional design, analysis, and test services. And we also happen to be a Siemens Platinum Level Solution Partner for Siemens software, including the AIMSIM system modeling software that is the subject of today's session. As a platinum level solution partner for Siemens, we provide a lot of value to our customers. We provide hotline support available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time across the U.S., software implementation services, integration services, including some uh, software of our own that we call ATA Suite, which is used for a lot of data processing for, uh, for testing purposes. We also, uh, at ATA, write all of the NASTRAN training material for Siemens. So if you've ever been to a Siemens course and learned how to use NASTRAN, those training materials were actually generated by ATA. And in fact, you'll find the, the course that you attended may have been in Los Angeles or San Diego or Herndon, Virginia, and suspiciously close to those offices I was mentioning before. And that's because the training courses are often, but not always, provided by ATA staff. If you'd like to learn more about the AIMSIM software or any other products in the Siemens product line that we support, uh, visit our website, uh, ata-e.com slash software for more information. There's a wealth of information here in the term of white papers, presentations, recorded webinars, uh, tips, tricks, macros, uh, lots of resources for an active engineer or analyst. So before I turn the session over to Scott Kidney for the live demonstration and technical discussion of modeling for deployable space systems, I first want to show a couple of slides describing what is AIMSIM in the first place. So AIMSIM is a systems modeling tool from, uh, from Siemens. It originally came out of the old LMS company that Siemens bought a few years ago. Uh, and the principal development is still done in Lyon, France. Uh, AIMSIM is a leader in the systems modeling world, uh, and certainly with its uh, the comprehensiveness of its libraries of models that are kind of put together sort of like a child would do Lego blocks to describe even the most complicated systems. As a system modeling tool, AIMSIM generally runs in just a few seconds. So those of us who are used to building complicated FEM models or uh, CFD simulations, uh, we have to get our arms around the fact that we can get answers so quickly uh, with surprising accuracy if you're working within any of the uh, pre-built models that AIMSIM provides. 
So what is done with AIMSEND? It is typically used to balance out the different um, multi-attributes that an engineer is going to face when trying to optimize the design of a system, especially in the early conceptual stages of the design where you may not have any details. You won't have any geometry. You might not know anything about the mass, even the materials. Uh, but nevertheless, you need to make some decisions about how your system is going to run. And AIMSIM allows you to do those sorts of early conceptual designs by building a system out of uh, pre-built uh, modules in the various libraries that AIMSIM provides. There are, in fact, 48 libraries of elements that you can uh, license to use with AIMSIM, comprising 6,500 multi-physics models. And these are not just simple models. Sometimes they can be quite complicated and they are all well documented and based on semi-empirical correlations or experimental data that's well backed up and published. So it doesn't matter whether you're working with hydraulics, pneumatics, thermal systems, electrical systems, mechanical systems, uh, electrical signals. Uh, there is a model in the uh, AIMSIM library that will allow you to get started with building a model of your system. So I'll now turn things over to Scott Kidney, who's going to be presenting today's technical material on modeling of deployable space systems. Thanks, Scott. Today, I'd like to discuss uh, deployable uh, uh, space structures and uh, going about that, I really kind of consider, I'd like to consider a couple different uh, manufacturers and manufacturer types for for this type of uh, a solution. Uh, first up would be an existing satellite manufacturer uh, who already builds satellites and fields them and launches them. And they are now looking at a new product and a new uh, a new problem that they need to solve. Again, with an existing uh, manufacturer, heritage is king as far as space flight heritage, uh, number of missions flown, et cetera. So a person often in this position is going to be looking at modifying an existing design, such as modifying an existing solar array design, which is going to be our deployable structure here. Um, how to uh, you know, maintain as much uh, heritage as possible, but without, uh, you know, maybe producing a completely new design that could really uh, not leverage all the space flight heritage that might be, uh, that, that could be used. So a way to kind of look at modifying or taking a design and uh, evolving it for a new solution. There's gonna be a lot of uh, information that's already existing based off of this, as far as uh, sim center motion type analyses that may be available. And AIMSIM couples in with sim center motion uh, extremely well. Of course, you know, sim center motion is from the exact same, you know, product line with Siemens, uh, the two, uh, offer co-simulation such that the equations of motion are solved, you know, both what's needed in sim center, aim sim is solved in aim sim, what's required in motion is solved in motion, and uh, the, the two work harmoniously. There's no, there's no issues with that. Aim sim's also written to work with industry leading software solutions from other vendors such as uh, atoms. And if you do have uh, a lot of existing information or uh, a lot of existing models uh, from atoms, Ameson's written to work uh, in a number of different ways with uh, atoms such that uh, co-simulation can be accomplished both with uh, Ameson uh, driving atoms for the solution or the other way around such that atoms could be driving simulation uh, sim center aim sim trying to produce a solution for this new satellite array that's required uh, for your next uh, generation satellite 
the other way, you know, not co-simulation per se, but there's also model exchange between the two programs such that you can import Adams models into SimCenter AIMSIM, leverage that work and, and, and modify the design and evolve it to your new needs. Uh, another way you can do that too, of course, is to take maybe ideas you've been playing around with in AIMSIM because it's so easy and pull that into Adams and do further analysis and move on from there. What's, what's maybe a little bit more exciting and what we see a little bit more of these days is new space and space startups. And what they really have to work with is really only a napkin sketch. They have this idea that they want to field and launch and, and go from there. And their starting point doesn't have all this heritage. They, they, they don't have the existing models that they can work with. All they have is a napkin sketch. So it's uh, it's a clean sheet approach, uh, trying to you know flush out some ideas and seeing where we can go from there. So uh, taking a look at this approach, you know, starting just with aim with AIMSIM, trying to do the modeling. Let's take a look at what we would have to do uh, inside the software. So again, as Scott pointed out, you know, this is library based with a number of different models. Uh, what we first have here is a, a drawing window where we can put together the model, uh, followed by, we have four tabs here, which is the progression of solution uh, for the model, as I call it, but it starts with a, a sketch where you draw out your modeling. Uh, submodels, which you choose as, you know, how do these submodels perform? Uh, parameters, so any numbers like torques, stiffnesses, damping, et cetera, that you would need to enter could be done there. And then, of course, simulation. So here, what I did was for just a three panel solar array, the panels are represented by these particular blocks here. Uh, we have some stiffness and dampers, and then I do have a rotational limiter set up on each, and then a torque input. So this, this would model just your typical three panel solar array um, that, that one would have. Uh, this, these are all accomplished by uh, just simply choosing the correct library, such as 1D Mechanical, and dragging the component onto the sketch plane, rotating it uh, as needed, and then dropping on additional uh, components. These, uh, once, you, once you move to parameters, you can see a number of different items that need to be populated to have a good accurate Solutions such as mass, such as uh, moments of inertia, uh, initial velocities, um, location of uh, various uh, other aspects of the model. And of course, like locations of uh, positions of like the origin or various endpoints and how big the panels are. And for these, I just drove, I just, I'm sorry, draw through a 12 inch panel. So those are all captured within the various components. You know, you know how much uh, angular displacement do I have on my end stops, et cetera? How much torque do I have going into each of the, the hinges to open up and deploy a solar array? Those are all tracked within the components. So as I move into simulation here, once I have the drawing done, first checks the model, making sure I have everything connected as it should and close that and then ask it to run a simulation. It's off screen right now. I'll do that again, just to, so you can see. Rerunning a simulation and just from for something this simple, it's just you know a matter of a few seconds. And what I can do with that is once I am uh, have a completed simulation, I can click on each of the panels and just simply any of these components uh, uh, affiliated with any of the panels, uh, you know, uh, how much um, end stop motion do I have? How much torque, et cetera? I can check all that so that, like for the first panel at the end point, I can see it. It starts at a zero point and then moves out to 12 inches because I have a 12 inch panel. And, and so on and, and go from there. The second panel in the series 
I can see, you know, it moves out to 12 inches. And then the second point, I can just add additional uh, points to the graph uh, on that panel. It extends to the 24 inch uh, a point that would expect to see as a, a, a number of solar panels lining up on a spacecraft. Number of different types of information are also available as far as not only just position, but velocities, accelerations, uh, what's happening at the center of gravity. Uh, and then of course, orientation as far as angular orientation, angular velocity, et cetera. So all these things are captured within a, a, a typical analysis and it can be modified by you. Um, so it, 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 it's very configurable. Uh, all aspects of your of your analysis. So from there, a relatively simple Aimsim model, I can move it into a, a three dimensional type of analysis and include more information such as uh, plate, the, the satellite panel dynamics or, or, or plates, for example, here, that if I did run uh, a modal simulation within SimCenter 3D and I had uh, a number of different modes that I wanted, in, wanted imported into AIMSIM, I could do that. And I can actually pull in the modes and the frequencies and that information and include it into a 3D analysis within AIMSIM. Uh, and, and really make that much more of an accurate uh, model of the solar array. The other thing I can do is actually within AIMSIM also do the animations and the viewing in 3D of something like a solar panel. In this case, it's more of a deployable arm where you can actually set up the arm components, the joints, et cetera, and use uh, its Mecha 3D assistant where you can then you know, preview the 3D models and use parametrization with your, your analytical model with an AIMSIM, replace simulation results and monitor live uh, simulation outputs. But you know, for the starter folks, and I, and I realize you know, I kind of put myself in the position of somebody at a satellite startup you know, I may have different roles too. And that's really a big concern as far as I don't only need to pay attention to the mechanical design side. I also need to pay attention to the uh, the electrical side and the considerations there, as well as uh, if I have a solar array, it's the primary energy source. How does that affect uh, what's going on with respect to the spacecraft? Attitude control systems, power systems, command data and communication systems, mechanisms. How do these all uh, play together? Uh, what's the performance of the satellite? And of course, you know, keeping in mind mission is paramount. We don't want to interrupt the, the prim primary mission of the satellite. So, uh, you know, how does AIMSIM, you know, pay attention, you know, try to focus on this type of uh, a problem in front of me. Um, and keep in mind, you probably couldn't do this with an atoms either. So it's it's additional, uh, you know, capabilities that you have beyond some other products out there. AIMSIM, again, it's very capable at not just the mechanical side of modeling, but also the electrical side of things, such that this is a very, very simple satellite electrical uh, model such that you do have a primary energy source. They do have a component that is specifically, uh, it's specifically a solar array uh, as far as uh, the variables that's required, you know, as how much power is going into it, what's the uh, electrical schematic of that, a number of different equations that are built into this component. Uh, as far as solar sur surfaces, degradation over time, and then of course, a sun incidence angle. So these are, you know, even though I say it's simple, it's a few number of components, you can see the amount of thought and the amount of uh, engineering is put, that's put into each of these components. But 
as it, it also includes a model of you know the electrical loads, many of which I've just gone through. Uh, a shunt regulator is modeled up here, and then also a battery pack uh, with a charge and discharge regulator. As simple as this is, this can be uh, stretched and more information added to it. And for an example, I took uh, just, it's a diagram here, but as far as say a solar array, maybe with a solar array drive or a reaction wheel uh, that does have uh, some kind of mechanical load to it, this type of information uh, as far as what's the power supply, what's the uh, motor drive and motor controller uh, doing with respect to um, the control of the motor and really its voltage supply can be just added to this so that you don't have to take just a constant for uh, attitude control system or power system. It's no longer represented by a constant. You can actually put in the actual uh, motor and motor data and the control and have that work with the rest of the power and electrical supply with the spacecraft and totally understand what are your draws, uh, what's happening with the power on the spacecraft and make sure everything's gonna work as anticipated. Okay, so that concludes my presentation for today. I'm gonna hand it back over to uh, Scott and or Jonathan. Very good, thanks Scott. Um, we will now um, go into the uh, the Q and A, uh, and let's just take a quick look at any questions that have come in already. Very good. And we have one question in the Q and A. Scott, do you want to read that in, or would you prefer that I do that? Why don't you go ahead, Jonathan? Cool. So our our question from the Q and A tab is: Can Aimsim handle composite based, say, carbon fiber deployment mechanisms? My my point would be AIMSIM's kind of at the level of um, torques and moments and uh, friction, damping, et cetera. So if you do have uh, information about, you know, what's, uh, you know, what do those uh, deployment mechanisms provide? It can be incorporated into AIMSIM for a system model. Okay, well, uh, if you have any questions, fe please feel free to raise your hand and we'll turn on your audio so that you can ask your question aloud or feel free to type it into the webinar chat. We'll give just uh, another 30 seconds or so for additional questions before we close today's session. If you would like more information about AIMSIM or any other Siemens engineering and design product, feel free to contact me using the information on your screen. I'm Scott Tebow out of our Huntsville, Alabama office. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for our webinar on system modeling of deployable space systems.